You are listening to a sermon from Village Baptist Church in Petaluma. For more sermons like this one, please visit our website at villagebaptisthome.org. Our mission is to win people to Christ and develop them into active disciples. We pray this sermon is a blessing to you. Now let's hear today's message. I was yesterday, uh, sometimes when I'm preaching, I want to hear what other preachers say about the topic I'm going to deal with. So I go online and, you know, put in the topic and see if someone else has preached on it before and see what they're saying. I put in topic and I saw it. I'm very sure he was Nigerian. Came and the topic is corporate prayer. And the guy... I had to make comment to the site and to the line and to the pastor. I said, this is heresy. You need to go to school and study the Bible. This pastor actually says, you don't need to come to church for prayer. And he quoted a passage from Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And because of that, he said, don't you notice prayer was the last thing that was mentioned? And he said, because prayer was the last thing that was mentioned, it means prayer is not that important. said, you don't really have to come together to pray. You can pray on your own. And this is a pastor that opens the Bible to preach to people. Do you have to come to church to hear the word of God? No. You can read it on your own. That's the kind of junk a lot of people are listening to in their churches today. And that pastor wore a robe. And he made their listen that so I hope your robe turns into fire and burn you. (laughs) Now, Deacon Allen, at least for the past 43 or 44 years that I have known him has shown to me that he is a man called of God, brought out of darkness into God's light. And he walks it. And he talks it. And he lives it. When he's not able to do it again, I know he is good. (laughs) Are you understanding me? You don't have to tell the church that when you are not able to join, you're no longer mem- when you're not able to come and participate in these following ways that you're not part of church, your history has already proven that you're part of the church of Jesus Christ. The problem we have today is there are people today who are, who are saying they can't come to church, but they can go to Safeway to shop. Immediately he comes to church. <laughs> Immediately he comes to prayer meeting. I'm tired. <laughs> now, men, be sincere about it. How many of you will say you're tired, you don't have time, when your wife says, I want to have some good time with you tonight?
Be careful what you hear on TV. Be careful what you hear online. Be careful of the people who come in sheep's clothing. Telling you they're preachers of the word of God. How can you say you're preaching the word of God and you can see it? It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, comma, to fellowship, comma, to, he didn't say first to the apostles' doctrine, second to this, third to this, and lastly to this. In fact, the church was formed at a prayer meeting. Amen. Amen. Let, me, let, me, let me declare this so I don't have any hidden motive while I'm preaching. Those of you that are not coming, coming to corporate prayer, you have a, I have a problem with you. I have a, a serious problem with you. I was born in a country that's predominantly Muslim. One thing that Muslims take very seriously is prayer. They are more interested in the God we have than the God they don't have. A Muslim will start praying at the airport when the hour of prayer is there. When you go to most of the Christian prayer meetings, you can throw a stone and hit nobody. Amen. Some of you looking at me now, you know you're guilty. Yeah, the way you're looking at me, you know you're guilty. If you know Christ, if you say you love Christ, you love to have fellowship with him, and you love the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. Many of us are away without leave in the sight of God. We're going to walk. I have some people that are even telling me they want to be leaders at Village Baptist Church. I said, no, you won't. <laughs> Not while I'm pastor. When was the last time I saw you at the corporate prayer? It's been a while. When was the last time I saw you at a cell group? And you want to be a leader? You can't even lead ants. <laughs> well, what is prayer? Prayer is the answer to many of our needs. Your own personal needs. Your friends and your neighbors' needs, the need of your church, prayer is the answer to your needs. Amen. I'm not saying wait until prayer meeting. We ought to pray without what? Season. But corporate prayer is essential. What, do, what will you do to a family member that doesn't want to talk to any family member? Prayer will meet the need of healing yes. when you need it to be uplifted. Yes. Prayer will help you to be uplifted. Yes. Prayer will help you to support Whatever you're going through, especially when you're going through difficult times, 
Because you are going to go through difficult times. If you have not been in one, you're going into one, or you just came out of one. And there are many promises in the word of God, in the Bible that we talk about. There are many passages that encourages us to pray. In Psalm 91 verse 15, he said, He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. In Isaiah 65, verse 24, it says, And it shall come to pass that before, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And Jesus came and said, Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find, knock, and the door will be open to you. Let's look at some of the examples of corporate prayer. Now, and please don't tell me, I don't need to be there. I pray on my own. Tell that to your boss at work one day. I don't need to come. I'll just be at home corporately, I mean singly, uh, doing whatever I need to do. You don't have to worry about that. Thank you. They give you your final check. They used to call it pink sleep. If there is no need for believers to come together, God will not tell us to come together. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's look at the early church. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Verses 23 through 31. Uh, excuse me. I, I'm going to read some. Uh, time goes so fast when you're having fun. Amen. Verse 23, on their release, Peter and John went back to their own what? People and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. That's corporate prayer. They raised their voices together in prayer to God. And they went on and talked about this. And then when you go to verse 31, it says, After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Let's go to Exodus chapter 17. I have that for you too, right? Okay, I want to make sure. Exodus chapter 17. Beginning with verse 8. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. 
But whenever they lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and her held his hands up on one one on each side, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites' army with his soul. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under the heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, the Lord is my banner. He said, because hands were lifted up against the throne of the, of the Lord, the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. We're going to get to Matthew chapter 18 later. You can compare it with this. The, this defeat is based on the fact that God is with his people Amen. when they do what he asks them to do. Amen. When we don't do what God has us to do and we begin to do our own things, we became like the Israelites during the time of the judges. Amen. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. That's how you get in trouble. Amen. Let, let me tell you this. You don't get in trouble if you're willing to listen to God and say, God, I'll try your way. Every time you start doing things your own way, you get in trouble. I guarantee you. The reason why you're not happy is because you're doing your own thing. You're like my uncle who passed away a few years ago. He thought drinks made him happy. And he drank until he could drink no more. And many times we had to go pick him up in the gutter, in the streets, bring him back home, whoop him many times, pour water on him, a whole bucket of water, just to cool him down. I don't know why you think just doing that is okay. We get away from God when we begin to listen to our own ideas and the ideas of other people. Amen. That's how we get in deep trouble. Well, I, I think it's this way. I don't care what you think. What does God say? America is where we are today because we think too much. What's going to make us happy? Don't infringe on my rights. We even have songs that were, songs that became very popular. It's my party, I can cry when I want to. Yeah, I'll do it my way. You want, if I want song his name, I did it my way. That's why we're in trouble. Everybody is trying to do something. We want to do something based on what we think. Do you know how much it's easy to kill your children? Yes. That, that's why when our children, when they were growing up, there were some things they couldn't do. Amen. Amen. Frida has raised so many kids, not just our own three. She said, 
with many, 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 and sometimes I see her discipline them. Get away from the kitchen. Get away from the stove. Children are automatically drawn to fire. <laughs> well, just let your child do whatever they want. Let them put their hand on the fire. Why do you want, why do you want to prevent them from putting their hands on the fire? But they're free now. Let them be free. Amen. I tell you, growing up in a home where daycare is provided is sometimes very frustrating. <laughs> I buy something from the market that I want to try. Immediately I put it down for you. You can't put that down. I said, why? Because kids are here. <laughs> no, 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 you can put that out there. You can put that out there. Put it in the cabinet. Put it way back. Some you can't even have around at all. I mean, do, the, do this. When you get home, go to Staples and buy some Tic Tacs or whatever they call them. Stick, sticky. Post, not post notes, the, the uh, Tic Tacs. Yeah, just, just go to the playroom and spread them on the floor. <laughs> I know Frida would divorce me immediately. <laughs> How come we, the children of God, just say we can do anything we want? As long as you feel like it. You know, I don't want to go to church today. I don't feel like going. Hey, I wish I had time. Look at the prayer of King Solomon in Second Chronicles. Now, the one thing about this is it's amazing. Uh, first King, Second King, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Chapter Six. I'm still dealing with corporate prayer. If I, if I have to continue next week, I'll do it. Second Chronicles chapter 6. Beginning with verse 8. And we're going we're gonna, to... This passage is a, an example. If you don't believe in corporate prayer... Just read 2 Chronicles chapter 6, the whole chapter. Then Solomon said, the Lord has said that he will dwell in a dark cloud. I have built a magnificent temple for you, a place for you to dwell forever. While the whole, are we, did I give you the wrong one? Yes. 2 Chronicles 6, starting on verse 8. Oh, I'm sorry. I started with verse 1. Okay, so I'm on verse 3 now. Sorry. While the whole assembly of Israel was standing there, the king turned around and blessed them. That's prayer. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who with his hands have fulfilled what he promised in the mouth of the, my father, David, for he said, since the day I brought my people out of Egypt, I have not chosen a city. What is he doing? Magnifying God, praising God. And then we get to verse uh, 8. That was what I wanted to say, but you know I mean. But the Lord said to my father, David, you did well to have it in your heart to build a temple for my name. 
Nevertheless, you are not the one to build the temple, but your son, your own flesh and blood. He is the one who will build the temple for my name. What is the idea of a temple? Place to go worship God. I can worship God in my home. I don't have to go anywhere. That's why we have all these empty seats today. And if you tell people they're not members of the church, they will die immediately. They have such a shaking. You think they have epilepsy. You're not a member of the church. Uh, my father built the church. My great 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 grandfather built the church. <laughs> what have you got to do with your great grandfather and your grandfather building the church? They were righteous. You are unrighteous. <laughs> Thank God we own this building. Amen. Amen. God supplied us enough money so we don't have to rent from anybody. We bought a place where we can worship God. Amen. And we paid it off. Yeah. It's the doing of God. Amen. Why do we have the building? We, you know, people who say they're members of the church, they keep staying home. But I'm still a member. No, you're not. No, you're not. When was the last time you used your spiritual gift for the church? <laughs> when was the last time you attended service? You can't even remember. How can you have body life when you're not in the body? It doesn't make any sense, Reverend Hunt. Let's not even talk about Bible study because you have not even opened your Bible in 10 years. You were going to give me the second point. Yeah. Said God's be Amen. <laughs> you haven't even prayed with the body. There are many people, believe me, my wife always shakes, she shakes her head. Say, I saw so and so today. I saw a man where I went to repair my car, came and hugged me. Pastor, you're always my pastor. <laughs> if I mention his name, maybe some of you in Marine City will know him. But I can guarantee you that 80% of you don't know who he is. He has never walked into this building since we bought it. Oh, you're still my pastor. How people can lie boldly. I even go to funeral services either I am, I am officiating or I am just there and people come out giving honor to God and to Jesus Christ, the great head of my, of my life and and, and my pastor. And I look, I said, who's your pastor? <laughs> in public, people will lie in public. Mm. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2. I, I, I don't want to miss anything. Let's, let's. 
Let's go slowly through it because this is really important. This is the year of what? And evangelism. All right, thank you. <coughs> Acts chapter 2. Who knows what, the, what Pentecost is? What is Pentecost? The day that Holy, the Holy Spirit descended on all the believers that were here. Amen. The church started on Pentecost. Church started on Pentecost. Listen. When the day of Pentecost came, 50 days after Passover, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And on and on. Read, read the whole chapter. Read the whole chapter. The beginning of the church. The church started at a prayer meeting. Let's read Ezra chapter 9. Ezra chapter 9. If you find it uh, real fast, you can give it to me. Ezra, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job. Okay? Ezra. What was the chapter? Chapter 9. Verse? Verse 5. You want me to read it? Please, read it. Read it through verse 15. ashamed and disgraced, my God, to lift up my face to you, because our sins are higher than the heads, because our sins are higher than our heads, and our guilt has reached to the heavens. From the days of our ancestors until now, our guilt has been great. Because of our sins, we and our king and our priests have been subject to the sword in captivity, to pilgrim, to, pil to pillage and humiliation at the hand of foreigner, foreign kings as it is today. But now, for a brief moment, the Lord our God has been gracious in leaving us a remnant and giving us a firm place in his sanctuary, and our God gives light to our eyes and a little relief in our bondage. Through, though we are slaves, our God has not forsaken us in our bondage. He has shown us kindness in the sight of King, the king of Persia. He has granted us new life to rebuild the house of our God and repair its ruins. And he has given us a wall of protection in Judah and Jerusalem. What are they still talking about right here? And a place to do what? Sanctuary. Gather. Pray. Yeah, to pray. gather and to pray. Go on with verse 10. But now our God, what can we say after this? For we have forsaken the commands. The commands you gave. Yeah. By their detestable practices, they have filled it with their impurity from one end to the other. Therefore, do not give your do not give your daughters in marriage to their sons, or take their daughters for your sons. Do not seek a treaty of friendship with them at any time, that you may be strong, and at any time that you may be strong and eat good things of the land, and leave it to your children as an everlasting inheritance. Okay, that stop right there. I'm going to pick it up, but. What, what is the point here? Even God is warning that when you know people who practice things that are contrary to what he commands, don't associate with them. Don't give your daughters in marriage to them. Because what will happen is they will definitely corrupt the people that they associate with. 
What has happened to us is a result of our evil deeds and our great guilt. And yet, our God, you have punished us less than our sins deserve and have given us a remnant like this. Shall we then break your commands again and intermarry with the peoples who commit such detestable practices? Will you not be angry enough with us to destroy us, leaving us no remnant of survivors? The Lord God of Israel, you are righteous. We are left this day as a remnant. Here, are, here we are before you in our guilt, though because of it, not one of us can stand in your presence. This was not made in private. Public prayer, repentance. In fact, I'll leave you to read the whole book of Jonah. The whole book of Jonah. After many days, Nineveh will be destroyed. Not only the congregation, not only those who are close to God, but the whole nation had to participate in prayer and fasting. Decreed by the king. Yes. Don't even let your dogs taste food. We don't take Prayer seriously. Even in the church. What will happen if the pastor say, all we're going to do today is pray? No singing, no preaching, nothing. We're just going to pray. I know what many of you will say when you get home. That was weird. <laughs> Corporate prayer is very important. And I want to say this. If you don't attend corporate prayer, you are not qualified to be a leader. It's just that simple. If you don't take prayer seriously enough to obey the commands of God for the church to pray, you don't qualify to lead anybody. Amen. The next steps, uh, next week I want to go through some of the uh, examples of prayer. Some of the commands that are very clear that God wants us to pray and what happens when we pray. What happens when we pray. Thank you for listening. If you would love to hear more sermons like this one or find out more about our church, please visit us at villagebaptisthome.org. Until next time, take care and God bless.